And guess who's back? That's right. Um, it's and it's us. Is, fixed too. is it? Did you get the fireplace? I did. Oh, that's uh, why? That's, the logs are fine. Interesting. And the lights fine too. What a weird. We're just talking about. <laughs> you see, it see maybe that we that could have fixed itself before we saw that we would have never been able to make that commentary, which just goes to show my point more. Yeah. Uh... So that weird little sh that. <laughs> Yeah. I think just just to finish the point before the uh, the the mug glitched out was that, yeah, the, the uh, you know having even one of a kind visual experiences like that where you have a you know a couple mods overlap that just think that's that's interesting even if it's just one time only, uh, it can, can be a novel experience. But uh, visual stuff is so important. Like you said, it's not it's not just a game about the dragonborn about dragons this that but but each one of those things is a hook, right? Each one of those things is something where the the it's an opportunity for the to to snag the imagination of the player in that the one unique way. Can... Just the fact that it's in there right. and it's it's well, crafted so well. There's so I much attention fetch. to detail. I mean, well, like, if you go up to I, some uh, of the the new uh, dragon skin mods tablet. and stuff. Oh my god, like the 4K stuff. It's gorgeous. The amount of, of effort they put into making the dragons look so spectacular. So it's all this love and craftsmanship that you were talking about. It's not just the mechanics, like I said a minute ago. I said like the, the, the visuals are a completely separate piece, but it's the fact that you have the visuals in there, that's the hook that really gets the imagination of the player invested in that, is that you could, you could sense the love and the craftsmanship Which, um, and all that stuff. To... Speaking of, I don't mean to interrupt you, but um, ha having the visual mods, I have had sort of things that are that are more focused on being visual, but they are more so above that gameplay changes. I've had, I really love using this mod, um, well, two mods in particular, one, it reminded me of it, but one mod switches the texture that is being used for, um, for, for Alduin with Parfenax, which, um, it doesn't just, but it doesn't like just switch the textures, like puts one texture on the other. Like if you got any texture mods, it would apply the right one to the, to the opposite one, you know? So it's not just texture. It is, it is doing more above that fundamentally, I believe. And you can also have it switch to names, which definitely is a very interesting change as well as this other mod. That I mean, uh, when I was thinking of going on the tangent, it made me think of um, Stormcloaks are red, Imperial, uh, yeah, Stormcloaks are red, Imperials are blue, which switches the main uh, colors of the two, which that rhymed, sorry. <laughs> but um, but it switches their colors, and it's also a really unique change because it adds a bunch of textures and changes a bunch of textures, yeah, but it also changes the feel of major parts of the games. Like, you'll see it, and you'll be like, Wow, that's weird. It's definitely not it. It's not super like well fit because it still look. There's still a higher quality, which is great. Yes, me. Oh, I don't know what. Oh, this is the dragon thing. Oh, they're going to the dragon thing. Oh, that's weird. All right. Anyway, I'm um, speaking of. It's a unique change, even though that they're. It is a bit high quality, so it does um make it feel less natural, which is, um, I know it's a weird complaint to make, but, um, you know what I'm saying, though? Yeah, it, it's, it's little subtleties like that, 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 um, it changes your experience enough, or it, 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 the feel is different. And again, like, like, I think, um, kind of going, going back to Dark Souls and stuff, I, I, I know, um, the Dark Souls or, or Sekiro, or even Bloodborne and stuff, each one of those games has its own really distinctive flavor. Like, you couldn't, if you were to superimpose the architecture, like the graphics for the architecture, uh, or, or the textures, onto Skyrim, people would notice immediately, right? Skyrim has its mm -hmm. own unique kind of flair, and, you know, those other things have their own, their own type of, like, you know, like, hyper-gothic style on you know, stylization, like flying buttresses on, on everything, right? Um, I know what you mean, like, 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 a subtle difference like that changes, like, the... the the uh, the experience that you have when, when when you're going through it it evokes different memories and different feelings when you're going through it like like to, you know to play Skyrim again where uh, they retextured every castle to look like uh, you know one of the great cathedrals of Dark Souls that may invoke all those memories that people have of playing that other game and and really if you were to combine other elements it, it could you know bring out, bring out a different tone kind of like the uh, the same kind of like lost world or dying world like really evoke these these other subtle emotions that go along with it so even something as simple as like a, a texture swap or a, a color change uh it's all very evocative of the player while they're going through it and that's something that the player is even necessarily hi like hyper conscious of they're not like oh i remember that buttress from zone four like it's not that kind of thing it's just it helps to build the tone and the mood in the background so, yeah, i agree it's very meaningful 
And it's something that um, you may not even realize in the moment, but when you have something as stark as mods, we can flip it on and off, or you can go back and forth and redo it Let with and without the mod. Um, you can Someone you can become more them. aware of that subtlety. You can you can I expose yourself to it and really kind of feel out the differences that get evoked in you as a player. And I think that's a wonderful thing, right? It it makes you more kind of aware of yourself, more aware of um, God, other you know the, like the the fantasy hooks that get evoked in you in, in different ways and different degrees. And it also makes it differentiable because. The, the tone and the feel that you get from one of the Souls games is so different than, you know, and it should be different than a lot of other fantasy games, where like you can start to realize, uh, like this piece belongs here and this this evokes this with me, and you know, and again, that's from your own unique past and memories. You know, how old were you? You were saying how you know, for, from your experience, Skyrim was your first open world game. How old were you when you first had exposure to that game? You know, like like what was going on in your mm -hmm. life? Um, all that stuff gets evoked by some of these these kind of latent memories and that can be and that could be triggered by you know the architecture the, the palettes all that stuff too so it's i, I agree it, it's it's uh the 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 way all these different mods come together uh, can be beautiful for that respect as well not just for pure objective aesthetics like look at the detail put into that 4k texture but because of the different collage the kaleidoscope um, a lot of times with the sorry to interrupt again but uh a lot of times with those texture mods um that without without just you thinking Oh wow, this um, this really looks a lot better. A lot of times, it makes you feel like how you were when you were less critical when you were young, seeing that game for the first time. It was the most beautiful thing ever, and um, seeing it in that higher quality re resonates those memories where it was the most amazing looking thing. You can bring that feeling back in a way where it, it looks so beautiful and like how you, how it looked to you when you were younger when you didn't weren't so uh, critical of games and how they look because you know to experience like triple a games currently in modern day games where everything has to look hyper realistic and if her eye doesn't twitch the right way then everyone's gonna be like this is the worst game ign zero out of zero like you know <laughs> back when <laughs> back when back when those standards didn't really exist when you know like when ocarina of time was the most graphically amazing thing ever which is still an amazing game have you ever played legend of Zelda ocarina of time yeah, yeah. I love that game so much. Before Skyrim, it was definitely my favorite game of all time. And I think that I played... Oh, yeah, the animals don't run away. This is a cool thing. They made the wrong decision, though. <laughs> now they're running. Here's buff Get as him, hell. Fendel. Oh, my God. Get him, Fendel. Bo, what are you doing, right? Anyway. Use your trusty <laughs> dagger. <Is that> <laughs> Any, I totally any, agree. Yeah. I, I remember playing Ocarina of Time. Um, when did that come out? I want to say mid 90s, like 95 something. Yeah, probably around that era. Um, when, when that thing came out. Um, but uh, I, I do remember having a whole new level because it was the first, you know, one of the first 3D things. Um, it was something that, you know, the, the systems were just getting out of sprite technology. It was a, um, you know, a cool, mystifying experience. Honestly, one of the coolest things I've seen so far for Skyrim and, and other stuff now is the automation of upscaling of resolution. So, um, yeah, I want to say it was for Morrowind. It was either Morrowind or Skyrim. Uh, I think it was Morrowind. There, there was a, a temple that was done, you know, way back in the day, and just the, the computers back then didn't have the resolution. They, they didn't, ha they couldn't handle a texture with you know crazy high polygons and crazy high levels of detail. They couldn't have to handle a mesh with crazy high polygons. They couldn't handle, handle a texture with crazy levels of detail. But when they remade the level in a more modern engine, they're like, well, I, I can't use the same way. texture because it looks like a bunch of muddy scrambled sorry, stuff. So they used an now. AI to comb the web really to you. find high-resolution things when downsampled would look the same as the downsampled thing from Orwin, and, and then they used that high-resolution image instead in the new mod, which is freaking amazing. And that's, that is a, a spectacular use of machine learning to, you know, it's a convolutional neural network. If you want to nerd out about that, I'm happy to do so. But like, uh, you know, using oh, I love, I love, I love machine learning. It's such a, it's such a beautiful concept as well with, um, with the way AI can learn in a way. And especially with deep dream technology that really, oh, that's trippy. Mm -hmm. I do that a lot. I'm actually, I, I don't mean to spoil any of my future projects, but I'm working on a, a thing where I'm taking an animation. I'm making every single frame I'm running. I'm running it individually through a deep dream to change the style completely. That's dude. So that's fantastic. Are you using like, or did you 
Are you coding your own CNN on the back end, or are you using uh, like one of the, one I'm, of the I'm, online? I'm, I'm using a Deep Dream Generator. It's one of the basic ones, but it works really well. It's the it's basically the one that everyone used to make every anime into spaghetti, you know, all that thing that happened. <laughs> we saw that ever saw that on Reddit. It was a big phase for r slash anime memes, whatever they're called. But, right, um, right, right. I, I, I've seen those and getting absolutely like nauseated looking at some of those. They were they were they were so well done and yeah. Like memories the, the of the first they're... episode. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so yeah, like the the opportunities for um, for for touching on like you said, touching on old memories, but doing it in a way that that um, you know it, it still it still touches on that old memory in what it you know given given the time frame. And the technology, but also the the the, uh, the person that you were when you experienced it. But you can rehash it now in a way that still kind of evokes the same thing. But like you said, but also brings you know more quality. But it, it evokes it in a slightly different way. And I, I think it's a it's a lot of that you know can't step in the same river twice kind of thing as well. I, I know I can go back and play um, a link to the past. Uh, you know, talk, talk about classics, right? Um, mm -hmm. Need a ride? Uh, I, I mean, I, I played the original control. Zelda from way back in the day. Um, and that that was uh, you know, we'll it's off. crazy to go back and see that too but um yeah, to even be able to yeah, and, and you know experience that for for what it is for what it was to kind of see it in retrospect um, but to be, able, to be able to kind of like you're not the same person and you don't have the same mindset uh, as when you first played that but it's great to both reflect on that for the experience that you had then but also kind of you get a connection to that past version of yourself and the mystery and wonder but you also see yourself in a way that you might not casually do, like you, you might not casually think about yourself in your life and all that stuff, uh, you know, just walking down the street or having a coffee or something. But playing that game really kind of, I, I think, helps to open, you know, if you want to, helps to open that kind of corridor to your own past memories and, and you know, and, and past experiences and can be a very positive, you know, charming thing. It, it can really, uh, it's kind of a win window into your own soul or, or one of those infinity mirrors into your own soul kind of thing. And I really enjoy the fact that, um, uh, like we were saying before, the people that put the, the dedication and time into, uh, you know, both new textures and, and, and meshes and all that stuff, but also into, you know, connections to the old stuff to really showing, oh, no, no murder guy. Huh? Um, Apparently. I don't know what's going on. I think that's him over there, isn't is it? Be careful. Uh, they don't uh, like it. No, it's not. It's someone else. I wonder what happened. She looks like she's, like, waiting for the killing. I was going to do, I was doing something cool. I was going to. Wait, is that him? Yeah, this person is busy. <laughs> busy trying to get murdered, right? <laughs> yeah. Please murder me, I'm waiting. Where the hell is this person? That's weird. Oh, is that... Yeah, there he is. However that worked out, I'm glad it did. That was, uh... <laughs> you'd have to be crazy quick yeah, to draw. Yeah. Oh, I, I totally agree that, that uh... The, the visual hooks are, are, are extremely important, and uh, I guess a lot of the people also don't realize that that um, he, he tried to kill Margaret. Right you there's there's a discerning eye you have to use when you're playing games, and I, I think you'll, especially because your your deep dream stuff, I think you'll really appreciate the subtlety of what gets evoked here. Because the whole point of deep dream is is the fact that your optical cortex has other pieces that get evoked by the way you know it uses pieces of like a dog face or an owl face or whatever to make up a human face and, and if, in, fa in fact with the one that i'm using you get to upload your own image as what it uses for that dream that's terrifying <laughs> which is <laughs> really <know>. cool <laughs> it's fantastic but like that is terrifying because i, I know some some stuff that my friends would do that would be God, my absolutely uh, uh shivers down my spine just thinking about it but um, well, mostly it doesn't work though. It's like you have to have some clear and defining thing about the image that you're using as a style for it to pick up anything. Because if there's no clear pattern or distinction of it or style, then it'll just use the colors basically, and you won't be able to tell if it's stylized. It'll just look recolored. I'm not I doubt. Okay. I guess it's so close it needs to look. I mean, I guess it, it would only make sense because if you just had a dream, and like don't. <clears throat> Excuse me there. Uh, if you had a dream and the only thing that you experienced the reference that 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 would influence that dream was just like a, a, a solid block of color you wouldn't have a very creative dream <laughs> uh right 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 dog and dog so um yeah so expect the the evocation stuff and i guess this, this is a really uh, impactful thing to think about that, that people y you have to stop and think about it because it's it's too easy to kind of to gloss over but like the the combination of 
subtle mechanics we talked about, all the subtlety of mechanics with like the little the little gears of you know modifying dagger damage or bow damage or whatever, uh, and then the visual stuff. Like one absolutely impacts the other. So you could imagine playing a Dark Souls. Now, uh, and here's the thing that a lot of people uh, may not initially think about. But if you had, the ex- d- you know, if you took Dark Souls and just got rid of all the textures, right? So the same, and, and maybe you know, tone the meshes down a little bit. But the same mechanics, the same kind of colossal boss fights, the gigantic arenas, instead of this this uh, supremely like kind of like you know uh, hyper gothic. Stylization for the buildings and uh, this the kind of creepy dim uh, stylization that they have for you know for armor and weapons and, and you know kind of a, this skull death motif. Instead, if you played Dark Souls, but all the meshes and textures were, were like happy rainbow strawberry cake land, and you fought like you know giant you know marshmallow enemies or like you know little flumpy you know cupcake enemies or something like that, um, would absolutely change the experience of that game. Mm-hmm. If yeah. every single other mechanic were exactly the same, you were like squishing giant marshmallows with your butter knife or maybe your spoon or something like that, right? It would absolutely change your experience. You, you would, it would not be the same game because of what gets evoked through the, the visual and audio cues. And it's something I, I think that really comes out when you do modding is when you, your like you said, your, your boilerplate generic experience, like everyone plays Zelda, if you play Zelda, you have played Zelda, you have played Zelda. Everyone has the same quest they go on, the same waypoints, the same everything, right? But hey, if you play it. Skyrim and you have the original stuff and then you change it to a different, you know, a different uh, uh, texture and, and uh, mesh set. If you, if you made Skyrim in a squishy, squishy wumpus land or whatever, right, with giant marshmallows, it's a Squish. completely separate game and it makes, but it makes you more aware of it. It makes you more aware of what is this evoking in me as I play it and not just from the way that you interplay between uh, you know, armor, weapons, magic, and these other overarching systems. But it's also like, what is that the the soft content of this game? What what visuals? What tone? From, you know, from the music, from from the even the palettes. Like you're just saying, just just palettes make make a difference too. Um, what what else is that evoking me along with the mechanics? And it makes you more aware of it as a player. Definitely as as a game designer. Even as a player, it helps to make you more aware. Of it. it helps to make you aware of what makes your experience more rich. I think that, like you were saying, that that a lot of people, I, I, I'm not gonna, I'll, I'll say, people that haven't played a lot of games or haven't played games for decades. And I'm not gonna say young people necessarily. Not but, real gamers. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I, that's that's the way I don't want to go, right? Is that that's the <laughs> people, not you know, hardcore gamers that are. It's just like, like you know, once you've seen, um, you know, you can see if your first big. Uh, uh, monomyth movie was Star Wars, right? I mean, freaking co-written by Joseph Campbell, the guy who wrote Monomyth uh, and Hero of Thousand Faces, all that stuff. If, if Sky, if Star Wars, the first, yeah, you know, A New Hope is the first one you've ever seen, then that's this like iconic, you know, uh, you know uh, generation, you know, generation setting kind of, kind of uh, production that was made. But then, you know, after you've seen the tenth movie or the twentieth or the fiftieth or the hundredth movie that uses the same formula, then you're like, okay, I can have a different appreciation of all the subtleties that I've seen with different, you know, some are future themes, some are past themes, some are medieval themes, some are whatever, right? But you've you've seen all the variations in that theme with the same underlying story structure. And it's the same thing with, with video games. When you when you've played like you know, if you if you Skyrim was like you said, the first major open world game that you, that you played for you, and what an impression they made on you. What you know, how that changed your understanding of how to behead losers, right? Of, <laughs> of mm. um, the other game after it. And uh, it, it's, it's like you said, it, it's a, a relatively unique thing for, for you. And, and some, some of it is your, your cohort, people that were born around the same time and had, you know, happen to have that same game system and have that, you know, access to the same stuff. Um, but it sets this precedent. And then after you've experienced it enough, it, it, it allows you to come back to it in that way where you can experience the, your your first thing over again through fresh eyes and connect to your old self. But it also gives you this more subtle understanding. Like you said, like you now you for? you just said you you appreciate all the subtleties of how these mods work together in synergies that not even the authors anticipated, right? They're not, not, they didn't even intend, let alone did they, did they uh, whoa, did they plan with those, those uh, this, this special combination in mind? It's a combination of, of uh, all these different efforts and how they happen to come together in that time. Even when they glitch out, like we had the cool stained glass effect a minute ago. Like, it was weird, but it was freaking cool to happen to catch that one glitch. I mean, maybe even the rainbow clouds are gone too. Now. We'll, we'll, we'll see. 
Maybe. Um, <laughs> take oh, yeah. There we go, right? So it was one thing for that one load. We had one screw up with one memory allocation of a handful of textures, and we got that, right? And now we reloaded, and it's memory allocation's fine. It's fixed. So, you know, we didn't spend a lot of time digging. Love is a burning thing. And it makes a fiery ring. Bound by wild desire, I fell into a ring of fire.